mom, I had just secured an internship, a summer, a paid summer internship in California. I was hyped. I'm like, I'm about to get, I'm thinking about money, taking care of my family. I'm like, girl, mm, ain't nobody thinking about Diddy. And I also had never imagined being in a girl group. That was not a part, you know, I just have always sang by myself, right? I barely got into the acapella group in high school because I was singing too loud, okay? So, <laughs> you know, so I was just kind of like, mom, this isn't even really, and she just was like, please just humor me, like just go with me to the audition. So when I say, I, you know, in hindsight, I truly understand how I ended up being the underdog with this story that people gripped, you know, holds on to because I went in there, baby, not expecting to get past day one. I, you know, I was just kind of like, okay, let me do this for my mom. She's not gonna stop. She's not gonna leave me alone. So this is in DC. So I do it, I go with her. There are a thousand girls, okay, at this this audition in DC. Um, ten thousand girls auditioned across the country, and so there oh, were wow. a thousand a thousand girls at this audition. I go in there. They had um, I think they had us do um, Beyonce, me, myself, and I, and I can't remember what the other songs were. Do that, you know. They got you doing a dance routine. They come up to me on that first day. They chopped us down from a thousand to one hundred. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna keep it real. When they said my name on day one, every single time my name was called to continue on, I was like, oh me? Oh, okay. <laughs> like, you know, I was like, yeah. oh, I guess we coming back tomorrow. So my mm -hmm. mom, my mom is on some, all right, you going to New York. Like it, this, this is happening. I'm like, okay, Monique, calm down. You know, like the next day there were a hundred girls. So they condensed it from a thousand to a hundred. We came back the next day and, um, you know, everybody saw the moment when, you know, Lori pulled me to the side and was like, hey, you know, would you would you be able to lose 10 pounds if we if we picked you? And man, I didn't realize at the time how traumatic that stuff would end up oh, being. Wow. Yeah, yeah. You know, being marketed as the fat girl when you weigh 120 pounds is a really wild thing. Um, and we, we could get into that. But anyway, so, you know, so they said, yes, you're going to the next phase of this thing, you know, going about your business and we'll call you when it's time to, for the next phase because they still had auditions across the country. So I go to the gym. I'm like trying to get myself together. I'm like, well, I, now I'm invested a little bit because I can't believe I've made it to this point. Mm -hmm. So the next step is New York City. And out of 10,000 girls, there were 41 who were brought to, to New York City to actually audition in front of Diddy. They like put us up in a hotel, start getting us prepped. You know, you got to learn some choreography. Here are the songs you could sing. You know, um, we, I don't remember them giving us anything at that time. And uh, then we auditioned in front of Diddy at the Apollo. And I was very, again, I was shocked when he, he stopped everything and he's like, oh, you're the one who was like losing the weight. You know, you look good. I'm like, oh. I was working hard. I was crying. Mm -hmm. um, and my name was the last name called on that stage. You know, and so that's what I mean where I'm like, I was standing up there. And when I got to New York was when the real intimidation started. I, I got wow. there because I'm like, y'all, I came here from the University of Maryland at College Park. Mm -hmm. I wasn't in this. You know, when I when you get there and you're standing next to one of Diddy's background singers who's auditioning, and you're standing next to, uh, uh, now don't, I don't want none of the um, sports fans to judge me because I don't know the name of the teams, maybe the New Orleans Hornets, I don't know. Like, you know, like dancers, you don't, look, I don't know the, the football, basketball, my mom would be ashamed because she's I like- I definitely don't know. <laughs> maybe we don't know. But basically, <laughs> NBA and NFL dancers and cheerleaders, people who are on tour with Justin Timberlake, people like that, you're like, oh, I, I, how the hell am I here? That's that's really what kind of kept going through my mind was like, y'all, I, I, Monique told me, my mama told me to come, said she thought I was going to make it. I didn't believe it. And here I am. But then you're next to these people who have been trying to get to this their entire lives. Mm -hmm. Right. Like who are like, yeah, this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do this. And so I was kind of like, yeah, girl, you ain't gonna make it like take your behind back to Maryland. Keep, you know, keep your education going. And so I was so shocked. I mean, when he called my name that day, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. That's how I got on the show. What was it like when you auditioned in front of Lorianne and Doc uh, the first time? 
when we first when we first see you, you're actually like the first serious audition we see on the show because they do this like montage of like yeah. comedic moments and then it cuts to you who's singing the Beyonce song like you said, me yeah. myself and I. What do you remember about singing in front of them that day? I remember. I, I mean, I'll be honest. I remember. At that time, I don't remember being super nervous and super like the way things got and it mm -hmm. became a competition because it, I really went into it like, okay, I'm I'm appeasing my mom. This is not really going to be a thing. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like <clears throat> the Beyonce song is fun to sing. So you just, I just feel like I got in a groove. Mm -hmm. I had on a, a, a probably, a, I think a pair of leggings and a little spaghetti strap tank top. Like, mm -hmm. and that, and that even speaks to what I mean when I say, I didn't have any background preparation of how you show up to these things. I I had never had a vocal lesson in my life at oh, that wow. point. Yeah, like I it wasn't it, it wasn't a thing. I grew up singing. I grew up in a musical family. My dad sings, my mother sings like but there's no there ain't no training. You know, mm -hmm. I went I went away for high school to boarding school, private school. They had choir acapella and so i definitely got a little bit there because mm -hmm. they're like you gonna sing in this choir you need to know how to blend you need to know how to, right so i got a little bit of that but i never had any professional training so i was like babe i'm gonna give you what I, would i be giving in the shower would i be giving in front of the family in the living room when they be like go on sing girl I and so that. you know and so i just i gave that and so i was kind of shocked again when they would interact with me and be like hmm, well what do you think about this and what do you think about that um at that time the stakes didn't feel very high and so I feel like that's where you get your most genuine, just let me just get up here and sing and do what I do and see what these people got to say. And then the further along you get, the more you start to get invested and be like, well, damn, well, now that I'm here, I'm trying to win. Mm -hmm. You know? When you are originally, when you originally auditioned, did you have to do a dance sequence? Yes. And that's how I don't know how they picked me from the beginning. <laughs> I want let to me, know about this. Cause we maybe, did, let's talk we, about it. Let me, we never let knew me about clear your... up a misconception. Uh-huh. Dominique has rhythm, okay? The whole world <laughs> making fun of me. Baby, I'm so glad. First of all, I'm so glad that this wasn't the age of social media, baby, because uh -huh. I might have I might have been ready to jump with the way people are are treating people now, you know, where it gets so in your face. But, you know, running joke of the world at that time was me not being able to dance. And the truth of the matter is, no, I never I ain't never take no dance classes. I was in the hood doing my little popping and locking it with my cousins. Like, so so I wasn't surprised that I was struggling with choreography, but also y'all don't get it twisted. Okay. I got rhythm. I got a two step. It's mean. Like the way people try to make it seem like I can't put my feet together. That was a problem for me, but no, I, I struggled with the choreography. I had never, I'd never been a dancer. You know, I was the, mm -hmm. I was the cousin. I do have a cousin who I grew up very, very close to. I was the singer and she was the dancer. So when she would teach me the dances, they would make fun of me because they would call me stiff. Like, all right, Dominique, like you gotta like, what is this? Like you need to loosen up. Mm -hmm. So I knew I didn't have the choreography skills from the beginning, which is why I was kind of like, I guess my voice is carrying me because um, these girls are dancing. You know, they were. <laughs> and the most hilarious thing about that is my father is a professional background dancer. Oh, wow. Okay. My dad. <laughs> the apple fell from the tree and rolled down the Baby, hill. It fell from the tree, rolled down the hill, and got rolled over by a truck <laughs> because Derek Wiz, as they call him, my dad has been dancing his entire life. Now, again, my dad grew up, do, do you know, in the dancing schools and in the, you know, my dad is a dancer to this day. You know, oh, wow. he danced for um, Houdini. Oh, nice. Yeah, he was a background dancer for Houdini. Since, since I was a kid, you know, he, he even as recently as before COVID, they were still touring. You know, they sadly um, lost a member to COVID, God rest his soul. But they, my dad was, I mean, I, they were, they did um, Central Park Summer Stage maybe five, six years ago, maybe seven. And he was wow. on stage. With so my dad gets down, down, down. And so that's the like inside joke that a lot of people who like, in the world are like, damn, Dominique can't dance. The most hilarious part is that my daddy's a background dancer. Uh. And he's, got, he's got the choreography, <laughs> he's got the rhythm, he's got the skills. And you know, I got the rhythm. I don't have the choreography. And I'm all right with that. So you learn you're on the show and you're getting ready to go to New York City. How much time did you have between your audition in front of Lorianne 
and the rest of the judges did you have before getting on the plane and going to New York City? Uh, weeks. Okay. Weeks. It was. It, it. I mean, maybe a month. Like I feel like the it happened towards the end of my freshman year. Maybe spring. Maybe going right into summer, and then we spent the entire summer in New York. So mm. it was. It was. It was weeks. It wasn't a long time. Did you have to do any tests or evaluations before joining the show, like psych evals, health, e health evals? No, no. I don't know what they're doing now on reality TV, but no, we just had to sign our lives away. You know, we had to sign waivers and all that. No. You never... They you never look so shocked. Because most reality TV shows, even during that time... Like the top models, the American idols, the football. Oh my gosh, love, no. They had them take psych evaluations to make sure that they were fit to compete and actually participate in the show. No, maybe Diddy was trying to save money. I don't know, but no. We didn't. <laughs> I'm just saying, no, no, that, that was not a thing, baby. We, we, that wasn't a thing mm -mm, at all. I mean, I'm being serious. That was not a component. Did y'all get paid to be on the show? <laughs> um, we got a per diem of 100 don't quote me 100 or 120 dollars a week i want to say it was 100 dollars. yeah i don't, you know i i'm not 120 dollars and i'm not week. i'm just speaking the facts of what happened i ain't saying nothing about nobody don't nobody come get me don't nobody come bother me i don't want no problem. trucks in front of my house um, but we got paid about a hundred. Yeah, it was a hundred dollars a week per diem. Um, we, you know, we weren't provided food that we were given like this, like, like, uh, provisions. Like, I feel like I vivid, I vaguely remember them putting like bananas and eggs in the house, like something like that. It's something weird that, cause I, I, I remember not eating bananas at that time. I do now, but I didn't at that time. So we weren't provided with food. Um, we weren't, we, we had to do everything. I mean, we had to provide our own clothes, our own, do our own makeup. I didn't know how to do makeup at that time. I mean, what I learned to do a face from those women, like just to do a basic, mm. like something I, I, I was, I was going back to the hood, getting my hair done and coming back. Like it was not a, you know, I mean, the, we had look Ikea furniture. Like it was not a, you know, it was TV. And so TV looks like TV, but we were not being like, taken care of by any means um we did get our makeup done for confessionals um we worked with oh was that morel hollis i want to say his name was he was tremendous he was so sweet oh my gosh anyway that was the only time that our makeup got done um was when we did confessionals which was like once a week and then when we made it to the finals we got um stylists that came and did us for the very last episode Mm -hmm. So, how were y'all surviving? How were you surviving off of one hundred and twenty dollars a week? Was your family helping you? What was you doing? I mean, yeah, I didn't, I didn't have a choice. Like it wasn't, you know. One, we were in New York City, and so when I had downtime, I went back to the Bronx. Like I'm mm -hmm. like, Grandma, make me a plate because I'm hungry. You know, so it was definitely an interesting thing. We were not, we had to make it work. We had to figure it out. We had to figure it out, and so I. I guess I was relying on my family at that time because um, I definitely wasn't working. I was filming every single day. And did you guys get paid episodically when the season came out? No. No. Dang. <laughs> no. Like, I don't know what kind of rights people was fighting for for after. And maybe, and let me be clear, maybe... Um, Aubrey and them, like whoever made it into Danity Kane, once they were in a record deal, I don't know if they, what they were able to attain from there. I would imagine nothing. If I'm being, you know, if I'm being honest, we know I never saw a dollar, a red penny, a n none of that. No, I didn't get paid off of having millions and millions and millions of people watching me on TV every day. Um, going back to when you guys are in New York City auditioning for Diddy. Walk yep. me through that day. What do you remember most about that day? Because so it we seems were, like it was a long day. It was a very long day. It was a very long day, if I remember correctly. I feel like there was a component at the hotel. I can't remember. You know, you're kind of getting to know girls. That was a very, like, um, 
that was an interesting experience. Like I got some stories. Like um, I remember um, <laughs> this is so wild. I wonder what I should and shouldn't be saying here. But Everything. This girl. <laughs> This one girl, and I truly don't remember her name, but this one girl was there and she was like crying all over the place. And I'm like, what's up? And she's like, she had this story. And now you don't know what's true or what's not true, but this woman said that her man had just left her high and dry. Um, and the man was the dream. Now at the, this is like, you know, this is a long time ago. This is before the world really knows who, who the dream is as an artist, right? Cause he was back, I mean, he'd been writing for a really long time. But she talked about how they had started to build, um, and y'all, again, don't quote me that this is true. I'm telling you what somebody told me. Allegedly. They started, allegedly, they had like, you know, she was like a writer for him. And then he had written a song that popped. Like, I think uh, maybe a Britney Sp Spears song. I don't know if he wrote Toxic or something like that. One of those songs that, went, da, da, you know, and that uh, he ended up. <laughs> You know, like get, you know, like you get on and then you leave. You know, you leave somebody to the side, and and I can't remember if if he said that uh, dream had gotten with Nivea or something at that time. It was someone famous, I believe it was Nivea, because I know he's. You know, I don't know his whole story, but I remember her just being distraught. She, I lost my man. I'm devastated. Like da 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 da. So you're get so you're with these strangers, but you're getting intimate. Like you know what I mean? Because everybody is in. They have having anxiety and trying to, you know, be their best self. So it was just a really, I've never had an experience like that before or after is what I'll say. So it was a long day, a lot of practicing, a lot of intimidation, a lot of like, y'all better be good when you get in front of Diddy. Like he's coming, don't waste his time. Like it was a lot of From who, like- From producers? Yeah, no, no, not the, like the, you know, the Lorianne's and, and mm. like the folks who were on his team. Um, who were kind of coaches to us, right? It was their job to make sure, Lorian had to make sure we could dance. Andre was doing like artist development, like stuff like that. And so the the moment that stands out to me the most was when uh, your girl, I think she was my roommate actually, got kicked off the stage just for dancing in the back. Yeah. I was like, I was like, now y'all, I remember having a moment like, I'm going home. I know they about to call my name <laughs> next because she could dance, whoever the girl was. Like, I remember watching her and being like, oh, okay, sis, you got a little, you know? And so <laughs> I felt like I immediately had a feeling like, all right, is this show for real? Like that was shock value in my mind. The first th thought I had was like, you out here just trying to, you know, embarrass people for ratings. That's that's what I was thinking. Uh, but then I was kind of like, all right, Dominique, dance a little harder because they, they serious. Like sis didn't get no opportunity to do nothing. Like she was dancing in the back and he sent her home and was serious. She left from there. like. So that was a little bit of a, like, I think it put the pep in everybody's step. Like, oh, okay. Um, and that was it. I, you know, I always, again, the confidence I feel is when I sing. So when I sang, I felt good. Um, and then he's running through the names, running through the names, running through the names, running through the names. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm going home. This was a good experience. Like that's, those are the thoughts running through my head. You said, you said a good 15, 16 names. Y'all said y'all were putting like, I think, I don't remember if they, yeah, I think they chose 19 and then there were three left, like the three mm -hmm. from the previous season or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so I was just kind of, the last thought in my mind before I heard my name was, all right, girl, like you did it. You told, you, you know, your mom asked you to do this. You did your thing. Like you made it all the way to New York. You got a little story to take back to college. And then he said BX, which was the nickname he gave me. And I was like, Oh, wow. Oh, okay. I really, I don't know how I'm still here, but let's go in the house, you know? And I was very excited in that moment. I think I remember at that was when the tables turned for me and this became a like, okay, I'm in. And so now let's get invested. Let's win. Let's do our best. Let's like, you know, it was that. So you guys make it into the house and you guys go meet the three from the previous season, Malika, Andrea mm -hmm. and Aubrey, what do you remember most about meeting the girls and your first introduction into the place you guys will be staying in, which at the time was like bare and looked like a prison? Yeah. Um, I mean, we were all, I mean, I can't say we were all young. I was 20 years old. And so, you know, we had excitement, like, oh my gosh, look at this. We're going to have this experience. 
you know, I'm an energy person. I'm an energy reader, so to speak. Um, and so it was just a, it was a thing like, you know, coming in with these three girls who were there, it was like, obviously y'all trying to already, not these women, but the show, like this is, this is clearly a recipe for drama and like mess to have these three like senior girls and all these other new girls. And they were already told that they weren't necessarily enough, but they were enough to like, so it was, um, I remember it being a little awkward. I remember um, liking Malika a lot. Like I felt at her energy um, was, was positive. And I remember feeling like she was um, a little older than some of us. And so just kind of like mentor guidance, like somebody who wasn't necessarily about mess. Um, uh, got bad vibes from Aubrey very early on. Really? Um, yeah, and and you know, again, I don't want nobody coming for me, but I just, yeah, we we didn't we didn't get along very well, and I'm and I and I, I am a lot, um, as a person, I stand on that, I like that about me, um, but I'm 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 a nice person, I'm a respectful person, um, and I think most of all, which I should have started with, I'm an authentic and real person, and I recognize about myself, I really really struggle, and this is a me thing. This has nothing to do with this, the other people. I struggle with people who I feel are not genuine and are not authentic, and so it it creates a you know just a thing for me. Um, Andrea was super sweet. That was it. I, I you know she was very her personality was a little dry. Actually, you know she was nice. Mm -hmm. She was a nice girl with a with a huge, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful voice. Mm -hmm. um, beautiful, beautiful voice. That girl was so talented. Um, but yeah, Aubrey and I just never gelled. Um, we never gelled. I, I had a really, I had a hard time with, and everybody was who they were, right? There are cameras in your face all day and you get used to that faster than you realize. Um, and then you just start to notice people whose behavior changes as soon as cameras you know, the, the real boom cameras on your face. And that was the thing that struck me the most and made me feel like, nah, I gotta have, mm. I gotta have distance here because this, what y'all getting, baby, you gonna get it when the camera's on, when the camera's <laughs> off, you gonna get it when I'm in the bed, when I'm out the bed. The, and, and those, I think were the people who I gravitated to. The most. Um, and so, yeah. And so the feeling that you are this way when nobody's looking and then when the camera's on you, it's kind of like, a whole different scene that was really, really hard for me. And we had we had some some moments like this, you know, when we were on the show. Wow. Yeah. So I want to ask you about this. I talked to Malika. I interviewed her actually. Oh my um, god. I did. It was really fabulous. And she mentioned something that stuck out to me that I'm gonna ask you. She yeah. said that very early on, I think before anyone had went home, there's a scene that did not make the show where basically you guys were given the challenge to go work at Diddy's restaurant at the time. And I believe it was Justin's. Do you yes, remember yeah. that? Oh my gosh. So, so whoa, before making the band ever, I'm, in, I'm a New York City kid. I'm a Bronx girl. Okay. I grew up again, bad boy, 90s, hip hop, R&B. My 13th birthday, my mom is like, you know, you're 13. What do you want to do? I want to go to Justin's. My <laughs> mother, I swear. I thought I was a grown up. We, you know, I'm a middle school principal. They think they're grown. My mother and my aunties took me to Justin's for my 13th birthday. You couldn't tell me, baby. I wasn't just it. And so it was just so funny and so full circle that we ended, I ended up on this show with this man and working in this restaurant. Yes, that happened. What do you remember about that? Because we didn't see it. Oh my gosh, I remember the embarrassment. I was so glad it didn't make the cut because um, I didn't know what a shallot was. I didn't know what a shallot <laughs> was. I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna go ahead and lay it on you. The, I don't remember everything about the night, but we were like, we were the servers. Like we were uh, walking around, how you doing, da 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 da, da You know, and um, uh, somebody asked for shallots or said they didn't want shallots and I was just pretending, yes, baby, I'm gonna handle that. And clearly didn't know what I was talking about. And when it was clear that I didn't know what I was talking about, Diddy like embarrassed me. Like he said something like, you don't know what a shallot is. I don't remember, this is 19 years ago. So I don't remember the exact things, but that was like, I remember being up one of the people who was embarrassed in the, in the competition because I didn't know what a shallot was. So wow, yeah, yeah, that was hilarious. That's what I remember. I feel like Maybe people weren't getting along, but I, I don't remember everything. I just remember feeling very embarrassed that I didn't know what a shallot was. And do you know what a shallot is today? 
Maybe I don't need, I ain't even gonna hold you. <laughs> onion, one a type of uh, uh, you know. Let me say this in my defense: my husband cooks and I don't. Okay, I so that. it's not my business. It's my business to know a whole lot of things. It's not really my business to know what shallots are about. Oh, it's that's right. Like, okay. I was at this guy's house the other day, um, cooking, and he, I ran out of onions, and he was like, "Well, you know, you, you can just use a shallot," and I was like. Okay, like I knew shallot was in the onion. Yeah, family. exactly. I'm like, now that I know, I know it's in the onion family now. At the time, mm -hmm. I didn't know what it was. I was just and, pretending. And he said it was like a shallot has like some type of infusion of garlic in it. I don't know. That's what the man said. I never went and checked, and you know, I never went and it's checked. It's given. I, I, I don't need to know for what I'm doing for a living. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I'm out here. I'm, I'm surviving. Okay. <laughs> Jesus, Dominique, that was so good. Um, Next on the list is Diddy, Puff Daddy. <laughs> Puff Daddy's in the kitchen frying fish, hush puppies, conk, <laughs> catfish, fries, hot water cornbread. Puff the Daddy thing. is frying. Uh-huh. <laughs> what do you think when you hear the name Diddy? What comes to mind? Um... I mean, what comes to mind right now is just, um, all the people impacted that that's really what comes to my mind. If I'm being honest, like would I, like if I'm closing my mind and I'm like closing my eyes and just focusing when I hear Diddy's name, I'm like, damn, like when I hear Cassie's story, um, and I know how much life he lived before Cassie was even born. Um, I just can't imagine the number of people uh, with similar stories um, who you'll never hear from, who aren't famous, who aren't um, anywhere where anyone would believe them if they told a story similar to hers, right? Um, yeah, that's that's really what I think about, um, especially when I talk about how important storytelling is to me. Um, and how important it is for people's truths to be able to be named. That's what I, I think about. Um, I think about a kid growing up in New York City. You can't grow up in New York City and not hear rumors. You know, you never, you're not famous, right? So, like, I'm saying I wasn't famous growing up, so you don't ever know if the tabloid drama or the stuff you hear in the hood about what Diddy's doing over here and there is true. But everything that's coming out is the type of shit I was hearing when I was a kid. You know, like, not some of this wild, wild, wild specific stuff in, in this like latest lawsuit with Cassie, but like you just always heard shady ass shit in the same sentence as Diddy my okay. whole life. And so I, I, I didn't know the man. It, it's crazy, right? That I grew up like that, but, and then I ended up having an experience with him. But yes, I grew up in New York city where Diddy was infamous, right? Notorious was this person who was behind Literally all the hottest people in the industry was one of the hottest people in the industry. But then you will also hear these random little like, did he do what with who? Like, you know, and you just a kid, you don't know, you know, you just like, oh, that's wild. Are you running around telling people, yeah, I heard this person doing that. I heard Mace got this, that, and the third, but you're not, you don't have proximity to know what is real and what's not. And so it's really sad to have some of these things be coming out as presumably or allegedly true because yeah. it's very scary. And I just think about the, I do think about the money. I do think about the financial aspect of like the number of people who should be able to feed generations upon generations upon generations of their families based on the work that they did with Bad Boy and not having a pot to piss in, that's wild. That's wild. When your boy got the billions or the hundreds or whatever, that, that part is hard. And I don't know enough about any of the, the details of anybody's situation, but you, you, you ain't gotta be a rocket scientist to see that everything that has happened in that, in those situations was not always above board, period. He got a lot going on and, you know, I will say, I think it's unfortunate for you to have built this empire, the majority of your life. And now you're towards the end of your life. And it's, it's looking as if it's going to be gone away, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I just want justice to ring, you know? And I want, if something was done, justice needs to be served, you know? 
I believe justice in it. Justice needs to be served. Justice needs to be served. Um, I believe that. I believe that. Mm-hmm. Hold hardly. Uh, yeah, you know, people always ask me if I had any, you know, wild experiences with him. I didn't. You know, mm-hmm. we we were on a show together. Every time I saw him, cameras were running. He was very, very extra, as I would expect him to be, um, because ratings, because his personality, all of that stuff. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm glad that I don't have any wild ass stories Good. as it pertains to to me and Diddy particularly, or anything that I saw or experienced. I just mm. I'm glad that that is not. I think that's another reason I'm glad I wasn't chosen for the group. I don't know I don't know what those girls experienced, you know, yeah. and and everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah. Last on the roll call sheet are the producers of the show. Nah, I don't remember nobody. I remember a white guy with curly hair. I don't even remember his name. He was nice. I think he was the one who was responsible for writing the letter for me to Mm -hmm. my college. And then um, there was a woman, I can't remember if she was a, a, just in charge of cameras. I feel like she was one of the producers. She was a black woman. She was super sweet. And the I can't think of her name right now, but we like are Facebook friends. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I never had any at that time. I, I don't know what the reality industry now is with producers, but they were really behind the scenes. There was no mm. real, like they would come in. I remember um, you get used to the cameras in your face. Mm-hmm. You just do until you are having a serious moment of vulnerability right? Like where something happens, you, you know, you've seen it on Love and Hip Hop. Get that camera out of my face. That's a thing of a natural instinct. If you about to cry or you want to fight or you da 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 that I remember those being the only contentious moments where producers would come in and be like, baby, you signed up for a reality show. Y'all start arguing. We coming. Like I remember a moment. <laughs> I don't remember which of us was I don't remember if it like which of us was crying, but someone was having a moment and we all tried to like do a thing in the bathroom and they was knocking on the door. They were like, um, okay, come out. Like somebody was, you know, we were, somebody's on the toilet, somebody's in the shower. Like we were trying to do a thing to mask. I think for one of the girls who was having a moment, something personal, I think had happened at home and they were crying and crying. And the producer was knocking on the door. Like y'all can't stay in the bathroom. We need to see what's happening. Like, come out. And so those were the moments where it was like, all right, all right. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, I heard you and you doing a lot. Like, but outside of that, they really, they're just so quiet. They're not really like there, you know? And so we had this like penthouse that we were staying in and they had their setup. Like you open our door and you look at the other apartment door and that's where the producers and the cameras and everything were set up. Yeah. And so at, in the house, they had like little holes in the walls. Those had cameras and there's like mics attached to each section of the room and like a little mic wrapped around your bed. And then there would be like a person assigned like to be walking around with the camera. And then as soon as drama comes in, you could tell they ringing some bell because then three different cameramen come in. They all coming from the angles, you know, trying to catch you, catch your tear <laughs> falling on top of the camera and all of that, <laughs> you know. But honestly, that was it was it was fun. It was fun. It was a really interesting and cool experience to 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 be a part of. I heard I've heard you throughout this chat talk about being labeled. You feel as the fat girl who couldn't dance. Did you walk away with any traumas or hurt feelings regarding your participation in the show? Ooh, ooh, trauma 1000%. And it took me years to even really realize it. Specifically around the weight. I I, I went back and I rewatched the show and I, I was sitting with a girlfriend of mine who had never watched it. So we were like sitting and watching it. She was like, oh like how they're talking to you is crazy you know like and you look back and you're like damn they was beating down on the sister like and not just me like the nature of the show get your shit together you're fat you can't sing you can't dance like and so i struggle with my weight so much now Mm -hmm. like probably for more than the last decade and i do attribute i mean some of it's a genetics but really 
that experience, there is a before, there's like a, you know how they say the, like there's a, my life before making a band and my life after. And I will tell you one thing, you know, to be a black woman, to be a dark skinned black woman, like in the world that we live in, confidence was not a thing that I was short on before I went into that show. I will, I give my mama and my family the credit. There was, I grew up in, in a lot of stuff, right? But baby, there was affirmation. I grew up hearing how brilliant I was and how talented I was and how uh, a beautiful, I, I grew up hearing that stuff. And so I don't, I honestly don't remember having any kind of body image issues going into that show. I wasn't the skinniest girl. I weighed 120 pounds. I'm 5'1". I liked my little body. I was, you know, I was in college, mm -hmm. collegeing, okay? And I never, I don't remember ever being like, ooh, like, is this part of me? Like, I wasn't that girl. I'm gonna just wear what I'm gonna wear, my little jeans, whatever, you know. And, oh, I didn't realize how much that, sh that show and the constant references to my weight um, just for the rest of my life impacted me. I did not, I really did not know until years later when I was struggling wow. so much with it that that was the moment, right? You, 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 five, you five, one, 120 pounds, size six, size four, mm -hmm. but you're standing next to girls that are size one and two and zero, right? You're standing next to girls who are this tall. You're standing next to girls who have been trying to break into the industry forever. So they already know they can't eat. They already know they got to be skinny. They already know they, you know, and so that the body image issues that I have now, I mean, I'm a mama, you know, I carry twins. Like, you know, there are things mm -hmm. about it that I accept who I am, but I have mm -hmm. struggled with my weight. And I attribute a lot of that trauma of just not being able to fully accept who I right. am and how I look to that experience because I, I really, truly ask my people like before before that show that just wasn't one of the things i struggled with and leaving that show it was a big issue which is why when i got with my managers they're like oh we getting you a personal trainer i was still skinny then they had me working out every damn day it was just this that was the image you the fat girl so don't get that like you gotta be you know that was that was rough that was very, very rough. How do you manage it today? Um, therapy. We love that word. Baby. And I'll brag on my therapist. I, I mean, I've, I've had the same therapist for over a decade. And um, I mean, it's been transformative. And it hasn't just obviously just been about making the band. But in general, mm -hmm. that's been, I've had to do a lot of self-work Um to address all the traumas in my life, not just mm -hmm. the making a band trauma. And and I think it, it 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 is the key in so many ways to showing up as a real adult, right? Dealing with whatever are the things from when you were younger, when you were a kid, whatever the experiences were, give yourself a fresh start because the trauma, you still gonna have trauma at 30, 40, 50, you know, the things are gonna happen, but you can't let it, you can't let it pile on mm -mm. from back you know, back in the day, all you you got to do, you got to look in the mirror, you got to do the self work. Um, I think a lot of my what I will say I've had to work on is um, seeking validation. Mm. That is something that I struggle with, and I feel like in a lot of ways that was born out of this making the band experience. Wow, this idea that you got to wait for somebody to say, yeah, 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 you good, you did that right, you you know. You want, I like you, you know, I like that. Um, being in an environment where everything is about somebody else saying, yeah, you got the talent. Yeah, you got the look. Yeah, you got the dance. Yeah, you got the this. I mean, yeah, you know, you get to that point. And so I really, I'm still working on that now. Yeah. No, nothing is ever, you know, a closed door. But I look at my daughters and I really, really, really want to model for them not giving a fuck what people I love that. You know, I love I gotta, that. And that's what Don't I mean. Like, fuck. Because it's, but, but the thing is, I gotta, 
I it's important to me that I'm modeling that. I could say that to Nola and Naila mm -hmm. until my face turns blue. But if they see me giving yeah. a fuck about what everybody got to say, that is, they will internalize that. They will. You know kids don't care what you say. They watch yeah. what you do. They watch what you do. They watch so what that's you do. A, now, now that I have daughters, that is something that's just so important to me. I love that. And I love the... um advocation for going to therapy you got to take that trash out or it starts stinking after a while you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying mm -hmm. um yeah wow dominique we're at the end of roll call you did such a fabulous job <laughs> thank you, you did i've been such having a fabulous so job. i didn't know what to expect i know we had a conversation i've been having so much fun with you oh just yeah this was this was a really good so jumping back into the show i have a lot of questions for you regarding like some of these episodes and what happened and what really happened i okay. want to ask you how was the running challenge for you dominique <laughs> so, oh you know what i do remember when i, I, I said, said i don't run about, unless, I don't want, unless i'm being chased. chased yes 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 because i don't like that ain't nah b that's not that ain't <laughs> that ain't what i do like mm -hmm. i was devastated when i found out we had to do that i was like i might as well cut me because i'm gonna be last in line <laughs> i was glad i made it through i mean i'm serious i was like you know, I mean, we didn't have to go get cheesecake from Brooklyn, you know, so it wasn't like that crazy, but it was a challenge. And that is the episode where Tiffany injured herself. Yeah, she injured herself. Yeah. yeah. I was sad about that. Um, what? Tell us about this cross-country bus ride you guys take from NYC to Miami, where you guys make like these stops at some radio stations. We don't see this entire yeah. bus ride. We really just see y'all stopping at these radio stations, stopping at Johnny's place yeah. in Orlando. Fill us in on what was going on because I've gone from Atlanta to New York City and that's like a 14 hour drive. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. Was going on? It, was, um, it was actually, it was, I think that they probably, they probably didn't show a lot because it was low key. Like it wasn't really crazy. Mm -hmm. We went out to, I think we started by going to Virginia because we had to do the, um, the show, the, the, the open up to Backstreet Boys. Um, I don't remember a lot of it. I feel like mm -hmm. we stopped in Mississippi. Like we just stopped places. We did little radio interviews. We stayed in hotels. And really the drama was when we got to Miami. I mean, like, you know, it, the, the mm -hmm. point was us getting to Miami and having that, that last bit happen there. And Miami was a lot. Miami was a lot. Um, first of all, it was fun. You know, we were, mm -hmm. we were in Miami and it was, mm -hmm. you know, that was very cool. But then the whole setup, man, I've, I'll never forget feeling like y'all trying to set us up. Diddy came to the, the house. They had us in a very, they had, they, they definitely upgraded us when we went to Miami. I think mm -hmm. we were staying at the um, penthouse of the Sagamore Hotel. Mm -hmm. um, and Diddy like throws us a party. He like comes through and I'll never forget. So funny to see his sons as grownups because he mm -hmm. had Christian with him often. Mm -hmm. And Christian was a baby baby. He was middle, you know. He was sitting in between his legs when we had that, like, moment, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So he, like, came and he's doing this thing. Like, y'all, y'all did y'all thing. Y'all earned, y'all earned the spot y'all in. Da, da, da. And I just kept feeling like, yeah, something ain't right. There's about to be some kind of setup. And then he tells Lorianne to, like, take us out. Take them out. Everything on me. Take them to the <laughs> bar. Take them to the strip club. I'm like... The, you know, so Lorian takes us to the strip club and they serve in a lot of alcohol. Mind you, we I don't even remember how that worked out because I was definitely underage. I was 20 at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, and so they're like, you know, doing all this extra, y'all deserve blah blah blah. And then what happened to set up? Lorian gets a call in the middle of the strip club saying, bring them to the studio. I was like, Yeah, I ain't even that drunk because or I ain't even had a drink. I don't know. But I was just like, you just knew, you knew. Ain't no Diddy ain't do that this whole time. He ain't out here spending money and, you know. And so when we got to the studio, he's like, basically, yes. Like, this is what the industry is like. Like, you know, you go out and you have your experiences and you might be in the club all night. Then you got to be in the studio the next day, all day. Or you got to be in the studio all night. Then you got to show up at the... And so we did that. When I sang Deborah Cox, it was two or three in the morning really yes that was like a bring them from the strip club straight to the 
to the studio. And that was right after, I do think I had an influence because right when we were having the 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 heart to hearts in the hotel and Andre came and everybody saw me crying talking about how they don't never ask nobody to sing this is the night when he asked everybody to sing we had to dance and baby I tore it up and I don't mean in a good way <laughs> okay that was I when I made the that face. Face. Uh -huh. oh lord was it like, was never... your foot hurt or something what happened no I just didn't know what I was doing. I'm not a dancer. So I'm like, oh, I guess the move is like this. Like, you know, I'm looking crazy. They should so, really give you more credit though, Dominique, because you was actually keeping up. Like you I was, was keeping trying. up. I you was, was keeping up. I think I think what it was when you when you see people like Shannon and Dawn, because like I because I was yes. watching. I rewatched yes. this season. And they're like, okay, their shoulder may be like a uh, you know, and yours yeah. is like a you know, I'm like, like I got the move. It's just mm -hmm. there. Yeah. The move. yeah. <laughs> so when he told me, now when I had sang Deborah Cox before, I never had the opportunity to go to where I went. Right? You were just I turn around. You're standing here, standing here. Like I said to myself, I'm just gonna keep fucking singing. That's and what happened when I got up there. Uh huh. And oh, he you said, just kept, to, "You just kept singing." Yes, I just because Diddy is Diddy would cut you off, you know, like he, that was a part of the show where you would start singing. And he'd be like, "Thank you," you know, that was a thing where you think you're in the middle of your song and he's heard enough, so he's like, "Thank you." So when I started singing, I just closed my eyes and kept going, and I was like, "I'm about to," I don't know if I'm gonna hear you if you say thank you because I was so frustrated, and I was like, "I'm gonna get this song out." So when I finished. And he said, check this out, check this out. When I say on oh, God, I really thought he was about to be like, who the fuck you think you is? Who do you think you are? Keep singing. Ain't nobody, like I thought he was going to be upset and say, you out of here because why is you up here? And so when he said what he said, all my reaction was so genuine. I was like, oh, baby, because the way I thought he was about to say, check this out. Nah, you out. I really thought that was what was coming. I really thought that was what was coming. I'm not, I'm not kidding. Cause I, 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 in my mind had made up my mind. I'm going to get all the way to the high note. I'm going to keep singing, whether you want me to or not. I just closed my eyes and kept going. I remember watching that as a child. I remember, I remember where we lived. I remember what my room was set up. Oh like, my gosh. I remember me and my cousin Adrian used to watch reality TV together. Um, and she's really the reason why I even got into reality TV because she used to watch it, so I started watching it. Um, yeah, so we yeah. really, you know what? I really got to dedicate all this stuff to my cousin Adrian Davis back at home because she's the one who made Shout me watch out to all, this, all this stuff, y'all. The reasons why y'all get into exclusives because of my cousin Adrian Davis, who used to make me do everything with her. I had no I choice. Um, and I remember us watching that, and we yeah. was like going up, you know, because reality TV is new. We just, we feel the emotion. We see Lori Ann. We see you yeah. giving it. We see Diddy's reaction. We've never seen Diddy ever react that way. And honestly, I feel like still to this day, we've never ever seen him react that way to someone that says, I can't even be Diddy right now in this moment. Like, you mm -hmm. go over there. Like, we not, I'm not, I can't even play with it. Yeah, he's not, I mean, in the entire history of the show, he ain't never said to nobody. Yeah, you're you're not even in the cut. You're just good mm -hmm. to go home. Like you're good to stay. I I would. We were all shell shocked. We were all. What do you remember the room? Like the producers, the girls, the judges. What do you just remember once you opened your eyes and yeah. saw what was going on? What do you remember seeing and feeling about that moment? I remember the girls cheering for me. I remember feeling gen. You know, because it can get dicey. We're all young women trying to go for the same thing, and so it can get nasty a little bit mm -hmm. i remember like looking up and seeing girls tears in their eyes clapping for me and it felt very very genuine that was i remember Lorianne and her dramatics and you know i feel like even producers like i feel like it was a moment in the room it was a moment it was a moment in the room that i mean and what's so funny is juanita d woods saying that what she said after she's like i think she's saying and it went all up in the rafters like it was that it, and it wasn't there was just i think it was just such a real moment in reality mm. tv that's what i will say you get a lot of scripted nowadays you get a lot of just like 
Let me, I'm on reality TV. Let me see if I can do this for shock value, that for shock value. I want to stay on the show. I want to get paid. That just wasn't what it was about back then. And so that for me, the reason people label it as iconic and all, I just feel like it was a real ass moment in reality television. It was a moment where Diddy took off his Diddy hat, which mm -hmm. never ever happens you know it was a moment of camaraderie amongst a bunch of women who were mm -hmm. in competition right that was huge it was huge i watched your i think which is still like your most recent interview before this one when you were basically like reacting to you singing and i heard what you said about it he was like my notes were not all my notes because they on. weren't and that that's another thing for me that made it so crazy like Again, I don't pretend, I, I know that I can sing. I know mm -hmm. that I have talent. I don't want, I'm not about to downplay myself. But yeah, it was also a very raw moment. Like, mm -hmm. I don't have a lot of vocal training. I'm just like, I was so in the moment that pitch, you know, maybe it was flat, sharp, whatever. I just was like, I am here in this moment. My eyes are closed. And when I open them, I'm like, shit, okay, well, what's, I'm going home, literally. You know, and I'm I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I remember being chosen to lead a song at my church on my church's second album. We shout, we we study, we shout, we serve. Numa All About the Church was like a it's a big church in Fort Lauderdale. A lot of people know it. Dr. Matt Dr. Matt King Carter was our pastor at the time. He's like a big thing in the in the religious field, especially on an academic level. And um, my, my song, Children's Choir, Eddie Oliver Jr. is the soloist. I was like the child soloist in the church. So everybody, everybody knew I could sing. Um, and it's all things through Christ. And so the song is really monotonous, you know? Like, it's basically I sing it by myself. The Children's Choir come in. We go to a bridge. We sing the, we sing the chorus again. And we go out. And so I'm thinking, I'm like, Shoot, I need something. You know, I need to do something. I, I gotta jazz it up. <laughs> the jazz this thing up. I got to do. I got to pull something out of my hat. You know, because and they didn't really rehearse us because it was a really easy song. It was a really yeah. I can't do all things. Do it's, it's really easy. I will post it on my social media. Yeah, and so it gets to the end, and I'm thinking I got to jazz this up, and I have been secretly practicing doing. The note that you did at the time, I don't know this comes from Deborah Cox, Deborah Cox's song. I don't know anything about Ain't Nobody Supposed to Be Here. All I know is Dominique on Making the Band did this yes. big note and Diddy went crazy. Oh and so at the end of the song, as the song is coming to the end, I breathe in. <gasps> Just in, in, the, in the thingy, the people go wild. Like they go oh my crazy. God. I mean, I want to be clear. I need to see this. You absolutely <laughs> better post it. I want to see it. I'm not kidding. So, I don't have the video, but I have the song. I was able yes. to get the CD last time I went to my grandparents' house, got something from Amazon, popped it out, was able to extract it. So I have it oh on my, my laptop, gosh. actually. Yes. Um, but yes, yes. Oh Dominique, Dominique's on, influence. Dominique's influence on my life is stamped in wow. wax because that last note was because I saw Dominique on Making the Van do that oh, Hail Mary pass on, and I was like to cry. no don't cry but I mean it's I mean it's the truth I'm telling you the oh truth like, I ain't making this yeah. up this is the truth yeah, yeah. so wow. thank you thank you thank yeah. you <laughs> yeah. I appreciate you like yes. I, I, I will never I just I just can't believe what the response was to me on television mm -hmm. still you know like it that Never lost on me. So grateful. I almost dare you to post that clip now in 2024. What clip? The clip of you singing. I ain't scared. <laughs> that the people the people need to see that again. Cause even when even when I rewatch and I've seen it a thousand times, I still get like chills. I'm like, this baby is going for it. Like she is going for yeah, it. My going little pink, for it. My little pink hall to top, my mm -hmm. hot pants. And my uh -huh. white belt. <laughs> and your white belt. Yes, ma'am. With your with your hair pulled back in a bun. Uh-huh. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, I want to 
Now, let's talk about a little bit the whole getting ready for the Backstreet Boys. So that was yes. like a big thing on the show where you guys are opening up for the Backstreet Boys and your group was kind of struggling, right? So we we have Taquita, who Lorianne is like getting on real hard. Then yes. you guys get on the clothes. You guys come to practice and see the other group has got this all-white gold theme going on. And y'all are like, dang, we don't look like them. And even when you guys get to dress rehearsal, it seems like the other group has pulled it together and they're doing well. Mm -hmm. And Doc and Lori Ann pull y'all to the side and it's like, listen, I don't know what y'all gonna do, but y'all need to pull it together before y'all get, get out here on this stage. Yeah. In perfect reality TV fashion, the other group bombs because yes. according to them, Dana started on the wrong note, which messed up the whole group, which honestly, you know what? I mean, even though Dinaj kind of set herself up for that because she was such a dictator, at least that's how it seemed watching the yeah. edit on the show. If y'all are really singers and y'all sing an acapella, it, it really didn't matter what Dinaj... I mean, it mattered, but it really should not have mattered what note Dinaj started on. Y'all was supposed to fix that as singers. You know, I studied yeah. music at Morehouse. You you just fixed it. And we'll talk about yeah. this later once we're done. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'll cuss you out later. Like, bitch, you started sharp. You started flat. But we'll yeah. figure it out. But your group comes through. My favorite that, moment... Now, that is posted on my Instagram. That's my, pinned on my Instagram. My favorite moment is Dominique Cump sweating when they're getting on the floor. I was having a lot of time, but you missed all my hands. Hands now, working with out there. Yo, writing, we were in the suit. Let me just say, that was, it was such an interesting thing. And again, you never know what they are behind the scenes thinking and talking. Mm -hmm. Because our we felt like we got the better song from the beginning um we were working with um this writer named adonis i think he's he, i mean he's been the, the biggest celebrities he's written for mm -hmm. um, based out of atlanta he was tremendous we had such a good time in the studio and i think ultimately we were like hold on we have the better song like we about to it's about to be and so when they were coming down so hard on us uh, we we I think we were we did not see ourselves as struggling as much as they were coming down on us. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't. I ain't gonna lie. I didn't look at the other group and feel like they' about to kill us. I never mm -hmm. felt like that. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, and uh, all right, let's talk about who was in which group, right? You had a bunch of people in that group who were not singers, and so that for me. Again, remember, I'm on this show because I'm a singer. I'm in the group with Dawn. Dawn. Who okay. sings down. I'm good. I, in my mind, I'm like, I know I have a good voice. I had a good part on the song. I was like, okay. Um, Taquita's voice is crazy. Taquita yeah, she'd be sing. doing a lot. But mm -hmm. Taquita's voice is tremendous. Juanita can sing. Juanita yeah, can yeah. sing. Oh, Juanita, oh, Juanita can sing. Juanita and so can that's sing. Okay. I'm in the group where better group really y'all had andrea this is what i'm trying to tell you the thing is we had the band take out me and take out taquita the band was there okay bring aubrey over and you really got the band mm -hmm. so that's what, like it was I just feel like we were like, okay, like, are we that bad? Because we feel like we got a good song. Mm -hmm. we, I think we felt good about it. And then we killed it. I really I feel like, you know, it. we really, really, I was so, I mean, to get up there, tens of thousands of people, like that was an insane moment. And I just remember us having our little, you know, like, well, I can't take it, it's okay, you make it feel. We just like, we hit it, we hit it. That was a, that was a really, really fun moment in the show, getting that experience. It was very nerve wracking. It was, it was a real thing where you got the things in your ears and you got to, that was, that was, um, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. I and I never liked their song, no shade to whoever wrote it, you know, I don't, but I just was like, man, they haven't looked for me. man. I was like, no, I'm okay. I'm mm -hmm. glad we got the, you know, we had a, we had a really good song. Yeah. Um, two things. I watched I watched the series a thousand times. I love how at, the, how at the end I don't know if Andrea did this on purpose. I don't know if she was just in it, 
bought Andrea on y'all's hands up. She was actually off from the rest of y'all. Yeah, yeah. She that threw was her an hand, accident. She threw her hand up first, like, and then when y'all came, when y'all went up, she went down. She came down. Uh -huh. yeah, that was an accident. That was an accident. I, Mama was feeling it though. Mama was yeah. in it. Mama was and in it. And I think ultimately, that's what I mean about why we won. Like we mm -hmm. went up there. It wasn't perfect. It wasn't perfect. But everybody was giving their all and really feeling it and not as, you know, you know, I think there was this air about some of the members of the other group, like we're, mm -hmm. we're making the band. And so like, we, we were like, let's get out there and get it. And we did, yeah. it was a fun, it was a good time. Did the other group really get booed? Yes. Oh, yeah. dang. Were they really that bad? I'm a, I'm gonna give them credit and say I if you think about the two songs that we were not they weren't set, set up for success our song was fast you know we had the high notes they had that um when we make love na -na. it was a mid tempo mm -hmm. they sound they they it's the Backstreet Boys like I'll give them the credit to say I don't feel like that was a song that that you open up for the Backstreet Boys with and so. I also don't feel like they have the best singers in their group, if I'm keeping it real. But the 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 song was not they they weren't set up for success. I didn't add her to my roll call and this guys watching this, I'm not being shady, but we just talking about the group not having the best singers. Let's talk about real quick how Jasmine, who was like a big thing now, I believe like she's like an yes. actress on a talent yeah. show. Yeah. Let's talk about how Jasmine made it through the entire competition all the way to the end. And we found out in the end, she can't harmonize nor really sing like that. First of all, I think that some of that was editing. I thought she had a really good voice. She struggled with her. She struggled with harmony. She struggled with harmony. Mm -hmm. She had a good voice and she was fucking gorgeous. I she mean, gorgeous. like, you know, there's certain things, gorgeous. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's alive and well and mm -hmm. doing very well in her life. Um, you know, you got to realize that making a group isn't all about, as you could see, because I didn't make the group and I'm pretty damn talented. It ain't all about what you can do with your voice. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, Shannon was in the group. Like, Shannon had a good <laughs> voice. Hold on now, because you know the things, the, the one bit gets cut. Listen, uh, what I'm saying is Shannon had a good voice. Shannon, Shannon had an okay play, voice. Play, play her. Yes, there you go. Let's keep Shannon it Shannon had real. an okay voice. Shannon had an okay voice. She could hold her own. She's going to do her harmony, right? You got to have different players in the game. And so mm -hmm. in my mind, Jasmine didn't have to be the best singer if she was going to be in the group. She was drop dead gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And people want to see drop dead gorgeous girls mm -hmm. in the group, right? So I didn't think it was a crazy thing. That, I didn't think it didn't make sense that she made it, that she made it as far as she did. And sweet as pie. I loved her. She was great. Um, Shannon's voice now is a whole lot better. Shannon, Shannon, I've okay. heard I've heard some of her music with Aubrey when they had the group Dumb Blonde. Okay. She's really good. And I actually got into the DK3 album that they did, that the girls got back together and did. And Shannon was yeah. singing. Shannon was singing. Shannon Listen, was singing. Shannon I was love singing. it. I Shannon love it. Singing. And 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 it's interesting because when we did the show, she was just so in her shell that mm -hmm. I don't know if it was there then. Mm -hmm. You know, she was like a, I think she was an NFL dancer or she cheerleader. Cheerleader, cheerleader, yeah. Right? yeah. Dancer. NFL really dancer or cheerleader. Yeah. She was like married. I don't know mm -hmm. if she had children all the way back then, but she was married. Like she was a little more on the mature side at that time. So I don't know if she just felt like, look, I'm, I'm, I'm here to do my part and not necessarily trying to outdo, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Maybe she's like, I know what role I'm trying to play here and I'm mm -hmm. trying to get it. Cause it yeah. and it worked. And it worked. So I, ain't, I ain't gonna hate it worked. It worked. You know um you, super sweet. You guys get sent home, you guys come back. How was it seeing Naomi Campbell? Oh she was so so sweet. You know I feel like you hear all these crazy things about people in sitting in your living room growing up. She was so nice. She was so nice. She was. She treated us really, really well. It was a short-lived, you know, very brief interaction, but she was just very nice to us, very encouraging. It was a, a little bit of a breath of fresh air when we interacted with her because so much of the other stuff is get it together, do da 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 da. And she just came in and was like, "You've got this, you know. You're so great. You're so beautiful." And like, 
you girls are amazing. And, you know, she was she was really nice. She was really nice to us. I wonder if her and Diddy was dating around that time. Baby. I wonder. I don't know. I feel like I feel like they they pitched themselves like brother sister at that time. I feel like oh, okay. the, yeah, I feel like the way she came is like, Diddy's my brother. Like we're like so close and <laughs> we're really good friends. And you know that. So I, I feel like that was the the image that they were kind of pushing in in the in the moment where we met her was like this is like my sister like mm -hmm. I'm calling my people my close people to come and evaluate y'all kind of thing yeah yeah so we're at the end right okay it's the final it's the final what eleven of you guys it was mm -hmm. eleven of you guys the group is getting formed Diddy is basically like sending you guys through like this like. I was like a mini little boot camp. Like he got y'all taking pictures. He got y'all styled up. He got y'all in makeup. He got y'all yes. in the studios. You sing this part. You sing this part. I really wanted to hear your version um, of that song that you were singing. I really dang. I, I don't even remember what song it was. Now it was. I just remember you saying "Weak." Uh, we. I, I. I remember you. You ended oh, on "Weak." Tell me. Oh, that was a um. It's just something about am feeling weak. Um. <laughs> That ended up being on his album. It did. Him and you know Christina what? Aguilera. Christina right. Aguilera did that. And and that has a that has a whole music video to it, right? Yes, they did. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't remember the the uh, like hook. I'm doing doing my Diddy shoulders, but uh, dun, dun, they had a video, dun, 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 a video on everything. Dun, yeah, dun, dun, Christina dun, dun, killed dun. that joint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was very cool. Yeah. Um. And then he has you guys dancing. He's switching y'all out. He's switching y'all out. Did you think you had made the band? And did you guys amongst yourselves had, did you guys speak about who potentially you guys thought were getting in the band? Like she is for sure getting in the band. Aubrey, yes. I just knew, um, again, Aubrey from my perspective was very strategic in the way that she moved on the show, you know? And it, it I think it felt, to a lot of people, like she was a Diddy favorite, like you know, like 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 this girl has whatever it is, whether it's drama. You know, I never thought she was an amazing singer. I think she has a, a decent voice, and so there was just this it factor that I feel like Diddy saw in her. I think people felt pretty confident that Aubrey was going to be in the group. Um, you know, did I want to get picked? Absolutely, especially when. We made the, when we won that competition, in my mind, it was me, Taquita, uh, Juanita, Dawn, and Andrea. And am I missing somebody? No, I think it was just the five of us. No, We knew six. it was going to, six? Yeah. Did we have Shannon? Maybe we had Shannon. I think I had Shannon. Mm -hmm. We had Shannon. So yeah, in my mind, as talented as she was, I didn't think Taquita was gonna make it because her voice was just so big and her she was not a, a rule follower. And I seemed to really bother mm. Lorianne on a bigger, like, you know, she if she like, stop flailing your arms and Taquita wanna flail her arms, she gonna flail her arms. Like, and so I kind of, I had my, you know, obviously in my mind, I'm making the band, right? I think that I was teetering because I felt like I kept hearing so much about my voice, my voice, my voice. I did have this like, are they gonna put me in this band or are they gonna make me a soloist? I did think about that. So when when I didn't hear my name and then I went home, I was like, oh, well, I guess. And then he called and was like, don't leave town, we need to meet. But yeah, I was kind of like, I felt like the group who who the group who won opening up for Backstreet was kind of gonna be the group if you think about it, because I didn't in that group I didn't have to be a great dancer. In a group with Andrea, Dawn, Juanita, <laughs> there was enough there, there was enough diversity in my mind that mm. that could have been the group. Um, and so I think what I thought was going to happen, I did not see Shannon making the band. I ain't going to lie. That was a sleeper for me. So I think I felt in my mind that Sequito would be out and Aubrey, it, I didn't fully believe always that Aubrey would be in the band. So my mind, Aubrey's coming over, maybe Shannon's out. Mm -hmm. 
if if I'm including myself, like when I had to do my own math in hopes of me joining the band, that probably would have been my band. So y'all always felt, it sounds like everybody always thought Aubrey was going to be in the group, which based off the show, like Aubrey's off doing her own photo shoots. Like Aubrey, Aubrey's yeah. doing her thing. It was um, just like, come on. Yeah, Aubrey, it seemed like Aubrey was always a shoe in to be in the group. Even though they tried to do this like thing with is Andrea like falling off. Like, I feel like they yeah. just did that for a little drama to give I like a little so story. Too. I thought so too. I yeah. Thought so too. Um, I feel like Andrea, y'all, they the group needed Andrea. If if the group needed Aubrey, the group needed Andrea. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like you needed well, them I both. Think, yeah, I was gonna well, their dynamic together, I think, was a factor, right? Mm -hmm. Like the, how close they were and you know, there's a little bit of, I don't know if you want to call it codependence, but like, I think it made sense that the two of them would be in a group together. It seemed like they always liked Dawn. Like they always, did he always really like Dawn? You don't think so? No, I'm agreeing oh, with okay, you. Yeah. I fully, yeah, I feel like I they always girl, liked Dawn. She's so, she's just so talented. I mean, mm. like, and drama free, right? Dawn was also, she didn't bring no mess. If you look back, on our season, at least, I, I didn't watch before or after me. But if if you look back, I mean, Dawn was a easy winner in my mind because mm -hmm. Dawn didn't bring no drama and she got all the talent, the the moves and the, you know, the 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 singing. That that for me was a short shot. What did y'all feel like Juanita was gonna make it? I didn't. I well, I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't know. I don't want to act like I had a, for sure, gotcha. Juanita. Yeah. Yeah. She's talented. She's very talented. Mm -hmm. And I think especially as a dancer, she holds her own as a singer. Mm -hmm. she, she sings well. She sings well. Very she pretty. She sings well. Yes. Very pretty. But you, you know, like the singer versus singer thing, like mm -hmm. that she could, in my mind, she could be in a group and harmonize and have the notes. And she, she sings very, she sings very well. So I don't think it was a, I don't think it ever was like felt like a guarantee that gotcha. Juanita would be in the group. Yeah. Um, how did you feel that day you guys are on this big stage with these people in the audience and your name doesn't get called? What did you feel? Full disappointment. You know, you work your way up to it and you you, you know, you start off not even wanting to be a part of this thing. Mm -hmm. But then you're in it and you're you're seeing these people you care about get eliminated and you're in the competition and you and now I'm I'm busting my ass. I'm actually working to improve my craft every single week. I'm trying to get better at the dance. I'm trying to get so when you've now put in all this work, of course you want the yield. You know, of course you want the result. And so I was very salty. I'm a human. <laughs> I was salty as hell because I look so damn cute with that. Woo, Alex did me up. That little olive green. Mm -hmm. He had me feeling like a million bucks, okay? And um, so, yeah, that was tough. It was very, 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 very tough. Um, yeah. I do want to know this. Um, so when the girls make it, they sing, right? And they do like a performance with like choreo and they, they know the parts. How do they know which parts to sing if they didn't know who was getting in the band? I don't remember what, what they sang. I think it was something we all practiced. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I think it was something we all practiced. Whatever the last song was, we had all practiced it. We all had some kind of part, um, so that you could be prepared to get up and go. Just. As a little fun, my mind goes a little creative. This Aquarius brain of mine. I was like, okay, if they had offered Dominique a solo deal, I think forward to when they did Day 26 and mm -hmm. Donnie Klain didn't make the group, but they offered him a solo deal. And yes. Donnie Klain actually continued on to the next season as the boys and the girls then came to get ready. I said, hmm, I wonder if in some alternate universe... If yeah. Dominique would have taken that solo deal from Diddy, That's would she have been included in that following season with the girls as they were getting ready? And she was getting ready as they did with Donnie when yeah. he got a solo deal and he returned back to the show and they were also documenting him getting his life together. I don't know. That's just, you know, a little fun just to think about. But it's not a crazy idea. I mean, you got to understand for all that Diddy is, he ain't stupid. 
you know, and I think that you are a fan fave. I think I, you know, I you said it, not me. No, you were, you were a fan fave. It was, you know, You're... it was pretty. Like, it, oh, and give me one second. Hold on. I'm going to give you your props. You were, you were a big talent on the show. And the show really relied on you a whole lot when it came to the story. We got introduced to your story, episode one, and Dominique's story was present in every episode it's fair until to say. the end. Yeah. We didn't and, see and too much about Juanita. We didn't see too much about Shannon. We didn't see too much about Dawn. It was real. you. It was um, Tequita. It was the yep. Nosh. It was yep. Ari and Andrea that was really driving the narrative early on. Malika, the Tiffany situation, that's yep. great TV. Cindy had her moment. But y'all yep. was really driving the narrative of the story and really giving the show heart and meaning and seeing yes. people like rise, yes. fall, struggle, have these ins and outs. You... Wow, I appreciate you saying this because it's, yeah. it's true. Yeah, it's really, it's really true. And so I can't imagine that if I would have Sign that deal that he would not have capitalized on America wanting to continue to see me. Tequila got a show. I walked away. You walked away. And I don't think Tequila got a show on the strength of Diddy. I think that MTV, MTV liked her. Yeah. I think they thought that those two were just a damn riot because they mm -hmm. were. And um, especially, I think there was race relations in there. You know, black girl, white girl <laughs> running around Vegas being crazy trying to get these deals. You know, I think they thought it was going to work. Mm -hmm. um, but I I would imagine that if I would have signed that deal, um, that Diddy would have, it would have made sense for him, for me to be on the show. You know how many people have said, y'all need a reunion show. Y'all need a, where are they now? Y'all need a, you know. And people were mad. They didn't make a DVD of that season. People were pissed about that. Oh, wow. Because they had done a DVD of previous seasons. Like the band with mm -hmm. chopping, they had made a DVD, and I and I think when making the band three started, so even the season right before mine with Malika and those other girls, there was no DVD, and people were pissed. Our season was very very popular. It was. Our season was right up there with the band. Like mm -hmm. we really really you know garnered a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. Another food for thought. This very random thinking. I was like. Could there have been an R&B group that consisted of Dominique, Tequita, Dinosh, and Jasmine? <gasps> <laughs> that reaction is crazy. I think um, I, I I never thought about it, but I think anything's possible. I really did. I you know I'd so be I'd so be interested in what people have to say about me you know, what their experience was. I had a really good experience with a lot of girls on that mm -hmm. show. Like, I really only didn't get along with Aubrey. I, I mean, you know, we, and we weren't like fighting. We weren't, it ain't what, what you're seeing on TV now, but we just really didn't rock. And for the most part, most of the other women on the show, Sweet as Pie, even Dinesh, again, I think that Dinesh ended up getting the villain you know, kind of reputation really for editing purposes. She's a little pushy, but not the way they they edit the made it seem. And so um I I enjoyed those women a lot. And I kept in touch with Tequita, Amber, Dawn for a little while, Jasmine and I, you know, stayed in touch for a little while. We like became Facebook friends and we'll talk through there every once in a while. Those were really the big ones, mm -hmm. the ones who I was like, nah, I really rocked with them. Hmm. Dominique, we're at the end, girl. This has been amazing. If you were in front of Diddy right now, what would you say? Ooh, wow. Um, that is such a good question, man. One I didn't even think about. I would say two things. I mean, if I could give him advice, and I mean, I don't know that he's deserving of advice or that he would give a fuck about my advice, but like, bro, just own it. Like, there's a, you know, the, I, I, I want people to be able to sleep at night. I want people to, mm. and, and him, like, you know, like, there's a part of me that's like, when I think about this man having four daughters, my gosh, you know, like, 
I don't know. I, and I'm and I I agree with you about justice. Like justice is one of the values in my heart that means so much to me. I'm the justice girl. I was the one fighting the bullies in middle school, and I'm the one. I'm the advocate. You know, self proclaimed advocate for people who ain't even asking for it. So yes, I believe justice needs to be served. But if I'm looking Diddy in his eyes, and I'm the person who's giving, guiding him, dog. You got enough money to own your stuff. He ain't going to jail. I mean, I hate to I hate to say it like that, but the truth of the matter is when you think about the types of allegations and the statute of limitations and how much the world fucking hates women and queer people. Ain't nobody come, ain't nobody coming for that man. Look how long it took to get R. Kelly. The, the, you know, like come on. And, and that's very sad to say as a woman, but it's just true. So it's like repent I'm sorry I mean, to laugh I, but I mean that oh, I know you I'm sound like, so you dramatic sound, uh -huh. I'm getting a little Tyler Perry there call me Tyler but I'm just saying I, I, I just think like get your soul right go 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 in the right way um, I just as a mother I keep thinking about his children mm. that's what I keep thinking about and I who knows behind this. Right? Who knows behind the scenes what he's owning with his family and da 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 da, you know? But in some place in his life, there's gotta be. I understand the public image and the lawyer. There, these allegations are false, and da, da, da. I understand that stuff, right? Um, but man, I just hope that he's getting right <laughs> for his own soul. Like, you know what I mean? That that's the first thing I would talk to him about. And the second thing is like, um, excuse me, can we get the reunion? Can we get the, where are they now? The people want to know. The people still want to know what happened to the girls for making the band. So give the people what they want. And until but then, also, you know, just come check out the two exclusives. Because, baby, we're going we go, we to chop it up now. and serve it up. You know what I'm saying? Let's get it. Let's get it and let's go viral. Okay? Let's yes. get it. Let's go viral. Oh, you love, you love.